welcome to episode one. No, not the Star Wars thing, but the first episode of the 21 Draw course in caricatures. My name is Loopy Dave and I will be your guide on this particular learning adventure. As you may have noted if you watch the intro to video, I'm a freelance illustrator based in Australia, which explains both my accent hey, and my koala-like cuddliness. In this short video, we'll get things rolling by taking a look at what is a caricature, why you recognize your mum, and other useful things. Our brains are amazing facial recognition machines. What with people we meet are related to, movies we watch, TV, the internet, etc., we will come across thousands of faces in our lifetime. These faces, barring an unfortunate combine harvester accident, are all basically built the same way from two eyes, a nose, a mouth, ears, all on a simple oval shape. Yet, aside from some people mixing up Daniel Radcliffe and Elijah Woods, we are remarkably good at telling them all apart. Oh, and if you are one of those people who mixes those particular actors up, the trick to correct identification is that Daniel, the British actor with the lighter hair, smaller eyes and lower nose, is one inch shorter than the American Elijah Woods. Our brains have learned to detect the subtle differences in shapes, sizes and distances between the various facial features and recognise each unique combination. In essence, we build up a library of features in our head and can recognise, say, that someone's nose is bigger or smaller than others, their features are more or less symmetrical, etc. Not only does it mean you have the ability to, say, recognise your own mother, definitely good news there and something I'm sure she appreciates, but it means your brain is basically doing the things you need for drawing portraits and caricatures already, keying in on those differences. Unfortunately, a lot of this is done subconsciously, so part of this course will be about being aware of what you see. When we draw a portrait, we are taking those unique facial combinations and trying to accurately capture them. Portraits are about recognition and accuracy. When we draw a caricature, we are taking those unique facial combinations and then exaggerating them. Caricatures are about recognition and exaggeration. This exaggeration can be making a facial feature bigger or smaller, closer or further apart, or even simplifying a shape. What you choose to exaggerate will be decided by what you want to emphasise. Let's take, for example, the Danish actor Mads Mikkelsen. He has a strong brow over heavily lidded eyes, a distinctive mouth and cheekbones so sharp you can cut yourself on them. In this caricature of him, I have exaggerated those features, drawing attention to those visual cues that say, this is Mads. Here's another caricature of Mr. Mickelson, where I have simplified the shapes right down and exaggerated features in a, well, different way. Neither way is wrong, and it goes to show that there is no single right way to caricature a person. Though some ways do work better than others, and, well, <laughs> some may not work well at all. So, how do we first make ourselves consciously aware of a person's unique features? And, if there's no single right way to draw a caricature, then how do we decide which bits to exaggerate or simplify? We ask the right questions. Whatever the topic or style or subject matter in art, knowing the right questions to ask is the quickest key to understanding something. It's the principle behind, for example, practicing with purpose. The advice you're often given when you're, what do I do to improve my art is to practice, practice, practice. But someone who asks what and how I should be practicing will get much further faster than someone who just practices without a plan. A more specific example is, say, when I'm painting textures. The questions I ask myself are, what is the object's colour and pattern? What is the surface quality? 
How does it interact with light? And how does it interact with other objects? When I answer these, I understand the texture I'm looking at better and can get the results I want. In this course, we'll be going through the processes I use and what are the questions I have found to be the most helpful. Just a quick note, as you are probably aware, caricatures come in a broad range of styles and approaches. We have the highly exaggerated, through to the more simplistic, sometimes even a bit abstract and everything kind of in between. My own personal approach tends to be on the gentler side of caricature and exaggeration, partly because of my, well, hybrid background in drawing cartoons and more realistic portraits, but also because I like to use caricatures for parody or telling a funny where going too crazy can distract from the storytelling. The approaches we will be discussing, though, should be good for however you wish to caricature. This is not a course in learning to paint like me, but rather finding the keys to your own caricaturing. Now, usually I would finish off a section with some kind of project or activity for you to do. But seeing as this has been a bit more theoretical than practical, we will start real soon, I promise, your task will be to start thinking about who you would like to draw a caricature of. Well, that's it for this episode. See you in the next.